Um, if it's twenty dollars, then you only sell two hundred and fifty tickets, but you make two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars in profit, which means you make eleven dollars in profit per ticket. Uh, part B asks us to write an algebraic rule. The name of the function uh, R and X that gives the profit per ticket. So you take your profit function in the numerator, then your ticket function in the denominator. That is your ticket function. These functions, when you write a fraction, in which the numerator and the denominator are common ones, so you have a variable in the numerator and the denominator, we call it a rational function. Um, and so this is a rational function. And their graphs look a little bit different, so that's what we're going to analyze in the next part here. function for the number of tickets sold. It's a linear function. If you graph that um, and uh, kind of zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole graph, uh, then the practical domain you should have identified is between 0 and 30. Okay, so when you think about it, x is representing the ticket price. So you're not going to charge a negative ticket price. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. You're not going to give the people money to come to the concert to see you. So that's why we start at zero. And then uh, when you get to $30 as the ticket price, then nobody else is going to buy it um, <coughs> according to this function. Okay? It's a linear function. Uh, and if x is 30, that's when the function is going to equal zero. So that should be your practical domain uh, for the ticket prices. Now, once I had that, um, when I plugged in, it asked us to estimate the ticket price for which uh, the profit is maximized. So when I plugged that in, um, I went ahead and I changed my window to go from 0 to 30 since I said that was the practical domain. Um, I also changed the uh, y values okay, to go from 0 uh, because, again, we're talking about profit. We don't care about the negative profit. We want to find maximum profit. Uh, so starting at 0. And I said 3,000 because from the previous model we already had a profit of what, 3,750, I think. So then that gave me a little bit of a buffer. Uh, I may have needed to adjust it above that, but I thought that was a good starting point uh, to begin with to see the whole graph. Now I'm looking at number three, and it asks us to graph the profit per ticket function. Now something that you have to do when you plug in these rational functions is you have to uh, put the entire numerator in parentheses and you have to put the entire denominator in parentheses because if you do not, your calculator follows order of operations. So there are no parentheses, there are no exponents. It's going to go straight to the multiplication and division. And if you don't have parentheses, the only thing it's going to divide is the 4750 by the 750. It's not going to divide the entire uh, first part of the function by the entire second part of the function unless you group them together with some parentheses. So make sure that you've got that. Um, I've already adjusted my window, so now I'm going to graph it. Now my y values are off. And I know that because in the first question we were looking at the profit per ticket. Well, that was like $3 and $11, so my y values are way too big. Um, so I'm going to go back down to like 25 uh, for my y maximum. And uh, that works a little bit better. It's still bigger than we need it to be, but, you know, I don't want to see the graph. Um, we do have a near curve. It's not a parabola. Okay, parabolas are symmetric. This is not a symmetric curve. Um, but this is what uh, some rational functions look like, um, or a part of them. Usually they have two pieces, as we'll see uh, here in a little bit. Um, then again, they ask us to estimate the ticket price for which profit per ticket is maximized. I'm not going to estimate that. We're going to use the calculator to calculate that maximum. It looks like, I don't know, maybe about 22. Let's find out. See how good of a guess I had there. Yeah, mm, maybe 22. 
Now notice uh, that is not the same as the ticket price that maximized the profit. Okay? It is not the same as the ticket price that maximized the profit. This is the ticket price that uh, maximizes the profit per ticket. So it's kind of interesting um, that they are not the same price, but it has to do with the fact that you're now looking at the relationship between two things. You're looking at um, profit that you make per ticket price, but then you also have to consider well, how many tickets are actually going to be bought at that price. Um, it's a profit you want to employ, and it, it does have a factor on um, how much you're charging. Okay. Now, they say that something unusual happens to the graph near x equals 30, and it uh, tells us to use a calculator or computer software to Examine values of R of X when X is very close to 30, say between 29 and 31 with increments of 0.1. Uh, using a calculator, use dot rather than connected mode. So you probably have not seen this before, but if you go to mode and you scroll down about halfway through the list, you'll see connected and dot there. Um, as options, so move your cursor over to dot and press enter. Um, and let's go to the graph and see what. Well, that doesn't change anything. Hang on, there's something else we gotta do. Um, the window right now I have zero to thirty for the x values and zero to twenty-five. Let me change it to. 20, just so we can see a little bit better. What was the other question? Um, okay. Okay. okay, there we go. It, it is dropping in dot mode. You can sort of dot set off the mark as you see it. So if you press trace, and you move your cursor along the function here uh, <clears throat> so that you get closer to x equals 30. And what the dot mode is, it just it, um, jumps from dot to dot. Watch the y values, okay? So right now, I'm at about 27.7, and my y value is 4.9-ish. Um, if I keep getting closer to 30, um, my y values are jumping drastically in the negative direction. And then when I move my cursor one more time and x equals 30, then all of a sudden I don't have a y value. My y value disappears. And if I move my cursor one more time, all of a sudden my y value, it was really, really negative, then it disappeared, and now it's jumped up to positive 150 if I move it one more um, in the right direction, I'm at 30.3. So it's kind of a weird thing going on here um, with this function, okay? So R30 doesn't give us a Y value, okay? Um, Why did I say that we cut the domain off at 30? Why do we cut the domain off for the practical domain? Why do we cut it off at 30 in this situation? What happened at 30? They stopped buying. There were no tickets that were bought. Um, so remember, this is the function of n of x. The denominator is what gave us uh, the number of tickets that are bought. And when that equals zero, that happens at 30. So when we divide by zero, we've got an issue. Um, we end up with, you can't divide by zero. You have to know that, that you are not allowed to divide by zero. <coughs> um, so that's what's going on here. Uh, <coughs> so it says in part B, describe the pattern of change in values of R of X as X approaches very close to 30 from below. And they say from below, they mean values that are less than 30. Okay, that's what we would 
Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, R of X values are uh, becoming more and more negative, so we're going to say that they are approaching negative infinity from the left side of the tree. And part C is actually where it says very close range 30 from above, so that's values that are above 30 or from the right side of 30. <coughs> Excuse me. Those values for the function r of x are headed towards positive infinity. Okay, as evidence, what I was showing you here, when we're going along the graph, all of a sudden we jump up to see the other side of infinity. Now, if we looked a little bit more detailed, um, then it would be an even it would be an even higher number. Let me do um, let's see here. 30.1 its value is 425 okay very very high the high y values there okay um, D was the theoretical domain of R of X <coughs> excuse me um, theoretically okay not practically not in the exact uh, scenario that we're looking for that has the context but the theoretical domain would be all real numbers except for uh, x equals 30. Okay, or you could, um, sometimes you'll see that just written as x cannot equal 30, um, but it equals anything else. Okay, now that's the theoretical domain. That's not saying that we have a context where we have restraints, we're talking about money, anything in and you'll get out an answer except for when you plug in 30. That's the only time you will not get an answer uh, under the picture. Alright, x equals negative 1 and x equals 3 are vertical asymptotes. As values of x approach negative 1 from below, so from the left side of negative 1, as our x values are approaching negative 1, our y values are Y values are headed towards positive infinity. Um, so, similarly, I want you to describe the pattern of change as X approaches 3. 